Hello guys, so after some break Chess Factor is back to streaming, I'm International Master Andrei Strovsky and I'm going to play several games against you, uh, analyzing everything that is happening on the board and probably providing you with some advice so that you can improve your chess. So let's play and learn together. Uh, if you're for the first time here, well, just go to Lee Chess and uh, challenge Chess Factor. Uh, for a game. So the time control, um, well, I prefer five minute games, but you can also challenge me with uh, uh, 10 minute games. I think longer games uh, make sense for uh, learning. So you choose, in other words. For now, I don't see uh, challenges. So there was one, but then it uh, has disappeared. But here is one actually. So uh, Anton Stone and 10 minute game. Okay. This works just fine, so I will accept it. Just a quick check if everything is uh, fine. By the way, we have the first viewer, I suppose. Uh, Artur Navrovsky, hello, my friend. Uh, so just let me know if everything is fine on your end. You can see and hear me well. It will be very helpful. All right, so let's start the game, uh, this time with the D4 move. Anton Stone, my first opponent this time. And I'm going to play something closed, which is, by the way, uh, not my speciality. Uh, and uh, my opponent decided to uh, respond with the Dutch, which is quite interesting. Okay, so I'm not sure uh, which line here is uh, the most ambitious. Uh, but as far as I remember, there is a gambit one which starts with the e4. So let me try this one. So I'm sacrificing the pawn for, you know, better development because after f takes e4, I may play knight to c3, attacking the pawn. If black protects it, I can undermine it. Uh, this sort of things. So knight to c3. Again, I'm not sure if it is uh, the best move, but. At least what we can see here, if uh, black plays d5, we have this check on h5, and then we grab that d5 pawn. So this definitely doesn't work for black. Knight goes to f6. So what should we do now? We can, by the way, continue with the bishop g5. So the idea behind this, we uh, exert some pressure uh, on f6. And maybe we want to take the knights and then take on e4. Maybe it's just a preparation of, uh, you know, long castling. So what we need to do is just to move the queen somewhere and then castling is ready. And after d5, by the way, we can uh, at least consider taking on f6 and then queen h5 check and then take some d5. This is an interesting option, isn't it? So let's try to calculate what's going on there. Uh, bishop takes f6, most likely black recaptures with the e pawn, then queen h5 check. If black doesn't want to lose a castle, g6 will be played. And then we're going to take on d5 with the queen. e4 will be hanging in that case. Um, the only problem with this line is that I'm not sure that even though I will have some attack against e4, I will have a compensation for missing pair of bishops. But the question is, is it simple for black to protect e4 after that because it will be attacked twice in that line? So bishop f6, pawn takes, queen h5 check, g6, queen takes d5. Pawn is attacked twice with the knight and with the queen. And if queen takes on d5 and knight takes on d5, then the knight will be attacking c7 and the pawn, which is at that moment on f6. And since black has played g6, it will be also hanging, so it will be kind of double attack. So queen d5 is not that great. How to protect e4? Maybe simple f5 move, but then queen a5 check and takes the rook on h8. This will not work. Yeah, I mean, maybe this makes sense. I don't really like to exchange bishops for knights, but in this particular case, it feels like we win some material and provoke some weaknesses in the opponent's camp, all right? So, T Darky123 says, yes, good analysis. Thanks 
That's what I'm usually trying to do during my live streams. And in general. So, good analysis. So g takes f6 is very bad because in that case queen h5 check forces the king to d7. So again, I win the pawn back. Uh, at the same time, damaging black's position completely. So e takes f6 looks like the only move here. It's basically forced. And after queen h5, g6 should be played. Otherwise, again, the king will be very bad. So g6 and then queen takes d5. Just a forced line. And feels like we should win some material. So for now, we just regain the material. So material position is balanced now, but e4 is hanging, right? e4 is hanging. As I said before, it is attacked twice. If queen takes d5, then knight takes d5, attacking both c7 and f6. Double attack, and we should win the pawn at least in that line. And if black tries to protect e4 now with the f5, again, feels like queen e5 is very strong. Attacking the king and the rook. So what to do now? Bishop to b4 is an interesting move. Pinning the knight and attacking my queen, in which case I take on e4 with the queen. Check. Then if king goes to f7, then probably the bishop c4 check, king goes to g7, and then maybe castling lawn or knight g1 to e2. That's what I wanted to play. Uh, the question, what is chess factor again? So it's a platform, first and foremost, and also YouTube channel, and potentially just uh, the entry point for chess lovers, especially for those who want to improve. Okay, so what to do now? To take on d8, simplifying the things, and then take on e4, or just take on e4 with the queen? I like this move, to be honest. Not because it is check, uh, but because we keep different options here, in my opinion. Because if black decides not to exchange queens, for example, um, having so many weaknesses on the king's side may be quite, quite bad for black. So just imagine if uh, instead of queen e7, black plays something like bishop e7, then white can cast alone, then put the bishop on c4, and it will be hard for black even to complete the development. All right, queen on e7. I don't want to take on e7 because it helps black uh, develop the pieces. So instead, I'm considering something like bishop to b5 right now. Or maybe even castling lawn, why not? But then bishop f5 will be played, most likely. Okay, it's a good question. Which move is the best here? I like bishop b5. So if queen takes c4, then knight takes c4, attack and f6, knight on c6 is pinned, so d4 is not hanging. Everything looks good. And it's also a developing move, so we kind of combine some active things with uh, prevention of uh, black's plans, meeting black's threats, and so on. Yeah, I like my position now have a material advantage. Obviously, black has a compensation, I believe, because of the pair of bishops and position is not that closed. So potentially there are some targets for these guys. But extra pawn is an extra pawn after all. And by the way, after a bishop to d7 or something, I will have an option of playing d5 with my pawn, quickly exchanging one of uh, black's bishops. So this is one of the typical methods of uh, playing against pair of bishops. So try to exchange one of them. There will be no advantage of this sort anymore for your opponent. So now f6 is under attack. And there is also a positional threat potentially just to take on c6 damage in the pawn structure. I'm not talking about d4, d5 because I believe black will play something like king f7 here, protecting f6. But if king remains on the 8, obviously d5 should be also considered. 
it doesn't mean that I automatically win the piece because usually if you play d5, uh, there is something like counterattack of this sort. So if bishop goes back, then there is b5 and black doesn't lose a piece. So, but it may lead to an interesting pawn structure with more weaknesses in black's camp. So we'll see. But I don't believe black will actually keep the king on e8, giving me a chance to play d5 here. So, oh, bishop f5, attacking the knight. And to be honest, I didn't expect this move at all. What happens if I take on f6? The king goes to f7, most likely attacking my knight. And then if my knight goes away, uh, there will be knight takes d4. I think this is the idea. Okay. What should we do? Probably just f3, all right? Because why not? Yeah, I guess this move deserves attention. Knight is still pinned. I support my knight on e4. If black captures, I'm not that against to have this uh, central pawns here. So it should be bad for me. The knight is good here. And since the bishop is on f5 already, black doesn't have this option. And against this move, I wanted just to take on c6 and castle. Maybe it's too straightforward. Let's have a look. So if we take on c6, b captures c6, then we castle long, protecting d4, and going away from the e-file, which is potentially um, a source of problems for white, because there is a threat of, let's say, taking on e4 and then playing rook e8, or maybe rook e8 immediately. This is going to be fine for me, I think. But there may be a follow-up, like bishop e4 takes e4, rook e8, in which case we'll have some like rook e1. So I think I will still keep my extra pawn in that case. Should be fine. c3 with the pawn can be also considered, in which case if rook e8, then bishop d3 is possible. But still, I prefer uh, development, so I'll just capture that knight and castle long. Okay, so now we have two knights against two bishops. Position is quite open, uh, but black has uh, problems with the pawn structure. So there are many weaknesses here. F6 is under attack right now. So I guess white is doing well. Even if I lose my pawn right now for some reason, let's say after bishop before f4, let's assume I... Uh, miss something, so probably rook h to e8. Even if I lose the pawn, I have a better pawn structure, so maybe even in that case I'm fine. Yeah, now, now I see it, so rook goes to e8, and if I play rook e1, there is rook takes d4, so I cannot really protect... I cannot really protect my pawn. Yeah, that's a problem. Probably this bishop c6 in casting was not correct. All right, so what to do? Let's just keep on developing pieces, right? So I like my pawn structure at least. Even if we exchange everything here, I mean all the rooks, and play with the knight against the bishop, I think I should be okay. But this is always tricky. This is always tricky. So I'm not sure. Maybe I shouldn't be in a rush. On the other hand, if I don't play rook e1 right now, then there may be a problem with the e-file. So I think I should play it. And then most likely, if, if black plays rook e8, I will just take and play rook e1. Otherwise, there may be some like rook e2, which is quite annoying. Yeah, I think we will simplify the things here. Yeah, well, I definitely could have played it better. So I lost a pawn that was unnecessary. But since I have a better pawn structure, I still think that I'll be fine in this ending. If black had a normal pawns, uh, normal pawn structure, sorry, uh, on the queen side, I would say that this ending is definitely better for black. 
because we have pawns on both flanks and in such a situation the bishop is usually uh, better than the knight because the bishop can be placed somewhere let's say on d6 in this particular case and will control both flanks right so it may combine attack with the defense while the knight to attack something should be uh, somewhere on one of the flanks right normally so it should be close to the object of attack which is not the case for the bishop okay let's play c3 I plan just to bring my king to the center as quick as possible. And by the way, this uh, move protects the pawn, so my knight is actually free to move anywhere. But I cannot really move it uh, until the rooks are exchanged. So the main idea is just to bring the king to the center. That's what I wanted to do here. And here I think I, I missed the option of playing knight e5, so I played this king c2 almost automatically. But knight e5 was really cool. I don't know why didn't I play that. It was really good. With check, and if king d6, then rook e4 and knight f7 with the fork. And if king somewhere else, I just take there and take on c6. Yeah, it was a nice opportunity. Okay, now I think the exchange is forced. What is the next stage? So black will definitely push his pawns on the king side, trying to create a passer, which is not going to be that simple. So for now, let's say if black plays some like a four, there will be king e4, and I will gradually grab the space. And if black plays g4, then pawns are going to be uh, blockaded more or less. But should I really care here? Should I play some like g3? I'm not sure. So ideally, I would like to attack this pawns so like king c4, king c5, and then maybe just king takes c6. But I have a feeling that if my king goes away from the e4, black will have great chances after f4 and king f5. And then g4 quickly, maybe even king e4, and this, this stuff. Okay, so what to do? If I play just knight f3 back and then jump to e5, there will be c5, typical thing. So the knight on e5 will be vulnerable, which means my attack against that pawn will be not efficient. Okay, so what to do? What about something like this? I mean, I understand it's probably not the best option here because I start pushing pawns on the side where I'm uh, not supposed to play at all. But the thing is, if black plays f4, I'm completely fine with this. I just play king e4. And if black plays g4, I take and again, I seriously improve my king. That's the thing here. Okay, now I wanted to just fix the pawn on c6. What did I want to play against this move? That's a good question. Probably just... Uh, hmm. Knight to f3 here, just g4. That's what black wants, basically. Yeah, this position is not very pleasant for white, to be honest. Maybe g3 now. Still have a feeling that I kind of help my opponent. Yeah, it was definitely bad. Why didn't I play king e4? Stupid. Oh, because of bishop d2 attacking my knight and pawn on c3. Yeah, black is just, just better in this ending, I think. Um, or maybe I'm still fine if I start pushing my pawns. Because for now, it doesn't feel like black has a concrete follow-up here. On the king side, everything is blockaded, more or less. Right, in this case, I can just take. 
so again everything looks uh, not so bad for me let's try this move g3 okay let's grab the pawn this is not very dangerous because i have this idea all right and now let's see if i take the bishop king takes and i just play king g2 Yeah, it's gonna be winning winning ending. So let's do it. And then it's just d5, threatening the breakthrough, and it's over. Because I can just play d6 here, alright? Yeah. I don't even need this pawn here. So my pawn promotes now. And that's it. Let's remove some obvious captures here. Let's try not to stalemate black. And yeah, the rest is simple. And even the pawn on c3 was useful in this particular line. Um, okay, so let's get back to the moment where I actually lost my advantage. It was uh, many moves before. Yeah, so somewhere here, I have a feeling that this idea with bishop takes c6 was wrong. Because after that, I almost uh, automatically lost my pawn. That's the thing. So probably the best way to play here was this, actually. Uh, so simply c3, and if rook goes to e8, then bishop to d3 just having everything protected. Yes, in that case, after bishop h6, it's not simple for me to castle, but maybe I'm fine with just continuing the development, like knight to e2, and this sort of things. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, what I have played was wrong completely, because I lost the pawn, and then this ending was absolutely unclear to me. But there was a moment where I could have achieved much more. So, for example, here, I think... It was just a tactical solution, knight to e5 check, right? Attacking the king and the pawn. And if king goes to d6, I just take the rook first because it's hanging after knight e5. And then the next move would be knight f7 check and I take the bishop, winning the game, I suppose. So to knight e5, king definitely has to go away from the pawn. And this means I could have captured the rook again and then take on c6. So I suppose in that case, I would have had just extra pawn and great chances. Yeah, black would have this uh, passer on e4, but my king is here to stop it. So I don't think it was um, very dangerous. So yeah, that was probably the best chance for me. What I've played was not correct. So in this case, black is doing just, just fine. Uh, the only thing is after h3 and bishop to g7, maybe I should have tried this g4. It looks counterintuitive, but uh, if black plays f4, let's say I have this king e4, and I control a lot. Yes, black has protected passer, but it can be easily blockaded. But I'm not sure if I have a follow-up in that case. Well, I still can bring my pawns to motion here on the queen side, and the knight from f3 may jump to e5 at the right moment. Maybe it will go to d3 even. So maybe g4 deserves some attention. So trying to stop black from, uh, you know, this active play on the king's side. Because this doesn't look good at all. So like knight e1, bishop g5, yeah, king f5. Everything looked correct. Uh, the only thing here is that h4 was absolutely unnecessary. Uh, I suppose that immediate bishop e7 creating sort of bishop d6 was correct. In which case, uh, in order to protect the pawn on g3, I have to be uh, fast with this knight e3 check. Then king goes to g5, intending to play h4. And I have a feeling that position should be uh, at least balanced. Maybe black is even better. I don't know. All right, guys. Thanks for that.